Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. My name is Olivia. Today is February 8th, 2019. This is my third floss tube video. I'm very excited to be back. Uh, the last two weeks have been a lot of fun. Um, I had a giveaway in my last video and it has been it has been really fun reading everybody's uh, responses to that and I did choose a winner and I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, what has been going on in my world? So the last time we chatted, we were I was boasting that we were having spring-like temperatures here in the Willamette Valley of Oregon, uh, that my daffodils were coming up, uh, my tulips were coming up, and my crocus was coming up, and everything was starting to come up out of the ground. And then over the weekend, everything changed. Um, we ended up getting just a little over an inch of snow on Tuesday morning, which it had kind of been predicted, but it had been predicted in the evening before. And so when I went to bed at 11 o'clock, they had said, well, no, all the snow is gone. You know, the chance of it, you know, we're not gonna get it here. It'll head off into the hills. And we woke up and it was, the white stuff was everywhere. It was so awesome. Um, it is, the, uh, the landscape right now is just so blah. Um, so to have the brown and the gray broken up with this beautiful coat of white on everything was just, it was a lot of fun. Um, it ended up melting by afternoon, which is pretty typical but the cold has stuck around. And in fact, we are under a winter weather advisory all this weekend. Each day is forecasted to get maybe one to four inches of snow. So fingers crossed. I know a lot of people are really excited about it. My kiddos are excited about it, especially my son, Ethan, who will celebrate his 13th birthday this weekend. Um, his actual birthday is on Monday which they are also predicting snow, and he is hoping that he'll get a snow day on his birthday. And I hope he does too, because I think that would be a fun memory. Um, it has been snowing on and off here, just little like spits um, this morning. Every once in a while you look out and you see it coming down. It's not, it's not covering anything. It's not even, it's just like a very, very light, light dusting. Um, they don't predict it coming in until later this afternoon, evening, but it is super cold outside. Um, so we'll see. I hope so. They're really hesitant to officially say yay or nay because the last time we got snowpocalypse, it was not predicted at all. We here in the valley were not supposed to see any snow. It was just supposed to rain and we ended up getting six inches of snow. Um, over the course of four days um, and it would snow and then it would we'd get freezing rain and it would snow again and we'd get freezing rain and it was it was really beautiful and I know it was five years ago this time because of my Facebook memories when I go on there it's saying five years ago today was snowpocalypse so I'm hopeful uh, the last time it snowed a lot, my husband and I got a really cool picture out front, so I'm hoping to get a new one taken. Um, so fingers crossed we will see some snow. Um, it's great stitching weather when it snows because you don't have to do anything. The Here, everything comes to a screeching halt. So it's an excuse not to do anything, like clean the house. But the house still does need to be cleaned because we're celebrating my son's birthday on Sunday. Um, but luckily, you know, my dad lives next door and my brother lives five minutes from my house. So not, no one has to really trek in a long ways. Um, so hopefully, 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 fingers crossed, we'll see. And we're calling it snowpocalypse here. So the husband has went off to shop for groceries and then later today we have to go run a few errands so I thought it'd be the perfect opportunity to pop in and do my video so anyway um, I did choose a winner from my last uh, video and that is Tina Brown so Tina Brown I will comment on your comment um, if you could send me an email I will put the email address down below I will get this out to you next week It'll either go out Monday or it'll go out later in the week, depending on 
snowpocalypse. Um, so thank you so much, Tina, for playing. Um, I'm very excited you are my first winner. Um, but I hit 1,000 subscribers over the past two weeks, so you know that means another giveaway. And I will talk about that more at the end. Um, I had a lot of fun reading through everybody's comments. The bathroom, by far, numero one most unfun thing to clean, uh, followed by the kitchen, which I completely agree. Um, the oven and the refrigerator and uh, the dishes were, you know, all kind of up there with each other, as well as cleaning the craft room and uh, mopping. Basically, cleaning the house sucks. We shouldn't have to do it. We should just have a whole house when it needs to be cleaned with whatever, we just shut the door, hit a button, and the whole house cleans itself. That would be fantastic. Um, <laughs> I don't think that's ever gonna happen, but maybe, just maybe, the bathroom, if that could just be self-cleaned, that would be fantastic. Um, also in my last video, I talked about my, um, well, I showed my cross-stitch piece that I worked on when we first got married. And I had no idea the name of it or who designed it. I just knew it had come out of the Country, country Cross Stitch magazine. I had a couple of people who knew the name of the pattern, recognized it, and have the pattern. Um, it is called Hoosier's Pantry by Linda Coleman, I think. Yes, Linda Coleman. Um, and she is, Jer or was Jeremiah Junction, or is Jeremiah Junction. Um, one of, let's see, two of, the, two of the stitchers that commented on the name of the pattern, they were able to purchase, one of them purchased it at a quilt show of all places, and the other stitcher got it at a um, retreat. And it's part of a series, possibly. So that is really neat. Um, I'm so thankful that you guys knew what it was called, because 20 years ago, I, I would not have thought to write down its information. I, w I didn't think that older me would care. So um, I'm really fortunate that you guys knew the name of it and thank you so much. Um, I did have some floss tube shout outs last week, which is always really cool when you are, you know, you're watching, you're stitching or sewing and you hear your name pop up and it's like, whoa, they're talking about me. <laughs> so Donna Ray of Flannel Jammies Farm, she gave me a shout out in her last video. Thank you so much, Donna Ray. I love your videos. You're always such a breath of fresh air. And I get very excited when I see that you've uploaded a new one. Uh, Misty Purcell of Luminous Fiber Arts, she also gave me a shout out in her last video. And she has a new pattern that she just released and it's super, super cute. Um, and then Kay's Cross Stitch gave me a shout out in her last video. I always watch Kay when I am sewing, and so uh, she's always such a delight. She, she um, cross stitches, she crochets, and I think she's a gamer too, which I didn't realize that. I'm guessing that's what it's called. I don't know if she is like an Xbox or PlayStation, if that's still a thing, or if it's a computer, but I know that she does do something involving gaming. So. A lot of fun to watch all of those ladies this last week and hear uh, my name, so thank you. And then I also had an Instagram shout out, uh, Deborah of Canopied Stitches, she gave me a shout out in her um, Instagram story, so thank you so much. And there was one other person that did too, and I can't remember who it was, and I feel really bad. I tried to go back and look, and I can't find it, so if I find it, I will Make sure to thank you in my next video. But I'm so sorry, I, I'm so new at this. I'm starting to write things down and um, that's why I keep looking down because I have a notepad down here that's got my chicken scratch notes. So if I keep looking down, I'm sorry. Um, anyway, so like I said, I hit my 1000 subscribers over the past two weeks. And my sister-in-law of the Box of Awesomeness, Sheila, she was my 1,000th subscriber. So that was so much fun getting that message that she had subscribed as my 1,000th. And so I definitely am so appreciative that everyone gets so excited when I upload a video because I didn't, I didn't think I would hit 1,000 subscribers when I 
started on this journey. I mean, of course you're hopeful. I'm always hopeful, but um, I, I just really, I don't know, I wasn't expecting it. And so I had to think of a really fun giveaway and I, I thought of something really cool and then I lost it. And I searched everywhere. It was so cold out in my craft room and I searched everywhere for it yesterday and I can't find it. So I quickly made something and then I have, you know, I'll show you that, I'll show it to you towards the end. So stay tuned for the giveaway at the end of my video. And I hope I'm not forgetting anything. Oh. Like I said, I had it written down. I had um, started recording this a few minutes before and uh, my phone glitched out and I was talking but my words were like, there was a delay so I had to start all over again. So I don't know if I've repeated anything a couple of times. So I apologize. Anyway, so move that. Uh, let's talk haul. I do have some haul as well as the last few charts out of my box of awesomeness. I'm so sad it's over. I love the box of awesomeness and I'm sad that it's at the end. Anyway, so um, I am on Trisha at 3 Owl Threads auto ship for Glitter Village and so I got the new one after my last video. Sorry, it is showing off some crazy, crazy glare. Um, so cute. And then I also, from Jen Stitching Niche, or Niche, I picked up Basket of Eggs by Shakespeare's Peddler. Uh, I really like this one. It's just a little, little fun stitch. Um, so it'll go out with all of my chickens out in the living room. And then um, the other two charts that I got from her. So um, I have had my eye on um, Anniversaries of the Heart by Blackbird Designs for a really long time, since I came back into stitching. And it was kind of one of those ones where it is quite an investment to you know gather all the charts together. And so I would only be able to get them a few at a time. But I finally decided to bite the bullet and start collecting them because I really do like them when they're finished. They are so beautiful. Um, I like that they are personalized. And so when I do stitch them up, I'm gonna personalize them to my family and my husband's family. And I just think they're a really sweet keepsake to have um, to pass down to the next generation. So I picked up the first one, which is Snow Garden. And I just, I love it. It's so, it's so pretty. I just love it. And then I also got Valentine Rose. I have not got the um, linen for it yet. I think I'm going to go with a 32 count and it's probably going to be Vintage Country Mocha because I, I know what the fabric's like and I'm, I'm hesitant to get something that's hand dyed because it never quite looks the same when you get it here and I want it to have that vintage look to it. And then Jen also sent this little freebie. Well, I guess it's not a freebie. You can buy this chart, but um, it, was a, it was a fun little gift. So thank you so much, Jen. And I also ordered the next two from one, two, three stitch because I had to buy linen for this one. My husband bought this for me. He has taken an interest in my stitching and he really liked this one. It is an Italian designer. I, I really love it. It's very intriguing. It's massive. I don't know when I'm going to start it, when I'm going to finish it. Um, but I, um, I really like it. I've never seen it and I guess there's a couple of other trees. There's a Halloween tree, an Easter tree, and one other tree. I can't think what it is. He got it from Bush Mountain and then he also picked up this one. He has always been a huge fan of uh, Egyptian decor, de de decor, decor. And when we first got married, we actually did collect um, some Egyptian stuff but 
there's only one thing remaining, and it's a, a tall pharaoh that holds his hands out and our speaker's sitting on it. Um, that's the only thing that remains out of our, we didn't have a lot. I mean, we were newly married, so we didn't really have a lot, but that's the only thing that remains from our um, Egyptian decor. Um, so I don't know when I'm going to get to this one. I think, so when I was reading the um, floss for this one, it has a lot of thread blending. And I'm not a fan of thread blending because I feel like unless you keep really good tabs on what you're using, you might accidentally put the wrong threads in the wrong place. And so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start looking into um, hand dyed threads and I'm going to try to chart it with hand dyed threads. So it's really cool. Uh, it's a Teresa Wensler pattern and he found it on Amazon for like $6. And he said that these patterns go from really cheap to ridiculously expensive. There was one for $1,000 on Amazon. I'm thinking they don't want to get rid of it. Um, so I am, I don't know when I'm going to start that one. It's got a lot of fancy stitches in it. So we'll see. We'll see. So anyway, but I like it. I will start it. I promise. Also, also, my husband is so funny. Um, so this picture right here shows our last name and the date we got married. And in my last two videos, the lamp was moved over and you couldn't see the date. And so I remember him saying something after my first video and I was like, oh, okay, well, I'll try to make sure in my next video that you can see it. And then in my second video, I forgot all about it. Well, it must have really bugged him that I still, that you couldn't see this. So honey, there we go, just for you. And fun fact about our wedding date. So a lot of people will say, oh, well, what was so special about November 22nd? There wasn't anything special about November 22nd, except, and I'm gonna tell a little story. So when my husband and I decided to get married, we looked at our work schedule to find out when we could utilize our days off without using very many vacation days because we wanted to go on vacation in the summer so we looked at the calendar and Thanksgiving week was the perfect time. We only had to use two vacation days and the rest of the week was holiday pay from our job. So we decided, okay, well, we'll get married that week and we'll go to Reno and get married. So then it was, well, what day do you want to get married? So we looked, we we're like, well, you know, pros and cons, do we get married during the week? What day on the weekend? Because we were gonna leave Friday, I think. I think we left Friday morning? Yeah, we left Friday morning, drove to Reno, and, and we were like, well, okay, we're gonna leave Friday. So we, don't, we definitely don't wanna get married on Saturday. And then, I don't know how we discovered this, but uh, my husband, he is a San Diego Charger fan. Of course, they're not called that anymore. They're the LA Chargers. And I am a Kansas City Chiefs fan. And they're both in the same division with each other. So they were playing on November 22nd, they were playing a morning game. So we decided, let's get married November 22nd during halftime, which was 1130. So that's when we got married. It cost me $50 to get married. Um, so it was a lot of fun. We honeymooned in Reno. We stayed there until the day before Thanksgiving and then we came home. So every once in a while our anniversary does fall on Thanksgiving like it did this past year. We floated our anniversary. I don't know when we'll celebrate it. Uh, my husband says let's wait until the weather gets nicer which I understand. The only thing we run into with this coming year is my daughter's graduating high school so it might be kind of an anniversary celebrating Allison's graduation vacation. So we'll see. We'll see. He wants to go up to Canada. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, so, sorry down that little rabbit hole. <laughs> box of Awesomeness. So, my last chart's out of the Box of Awesomeness. I'm so sad. I've enjoyed looking at each one of them. Now I have to put them away. So the first one I got out of the 
Box of Awesomeness is a Lizzie Kate Thankful String. Hang on a second. Thankful String. This one's really cute. Um, I've now decided I probably should get all the other ones. I don't, I think this is going to be a summer stitch for me and maybe it will be for some of the other ones. We'll see, but I love it. I think the turkey is the cutest thing ever. Excited about that one. Then I also got uh, Merry Christmas by Country Cottage Needleworks. And Prairie Schooler, The Four Seasons. I think this is really cute. Um, I saw that um, they also have Country Seasons, which I don't think it's been uh, re-released yet. Um, so I'm hoping it will this year because it's really cute and I, I want it. Um, and then this is my first Barbara Anna Designs. This is Wicked. Yeah, Wicked. Very cute. Love, love, love. And then I got Christmas Time by um, New York Dreamer. Sorry. So cute. They have a bunch of other ones in the series that are, are really adorable. They kind of remind me a little bit of the word plays by uh, Brenda Gervais. And then I also got um, Santa Sampler by Country Cottage Needleworks. And this one, I, I tried to get it um, in November, November, December, and every time I went on to go buy it, it was sold out. So I'm very happy to have this one. And then I also got And Heaven and Nature Sing by Kathy Barrick. Love this one. Love, love. Love them all. And then Prairie Schooler July. This is one of my favorite ones. Very fun. And Pumpkin Patch, which I've had this one. This one's been in my shopping cart many times and taken out many times. So I am happy to finally have it. I'm planning on stitching the whole thing and the ornaments at some point this year. So that concludes my haul. Um, I do have uh, some that's coming from uh, 123 Stitch because I had to order some linen um, and I'll have that in my next video. However, one of the things I might stitch in between now and my next video, so we'll see. I know there's like an unwritten rule that you kind of save it until you upload your video, but mm, I'm probably going to stitch mine. Um, so, one more I guess it's not really haul-ish. Um, this is the Needleworkers Notebook by Ardeth Designs, if I'm saying that right. Yeah, Ardeth Designs. Um, Amazon $12.99. It is a way to keep track of your needlework stitching. So it, I'm gonna give it a try because what happens is I'll have, so I'll stitch something and I will convert some of it and I don't write it down. And, uh, and it always, every once in a while, somebody will come along and they'll say, hey, what did you use as your conversion? And I don't remember and I feel really, really bad. So I'm hoping that this will help me keep more on track. Um, I feel like it's a great buy for $12.99 on Amazon um, because I know some of these things can get kind of expensive. Um, so I am excited to give this a try. I've already started filling stuff out. Um, anything that I started in 2019 going forward will be in this book. So if you are like me and you're trying to keep track of your stuff, this might be the answer for you. And what should I do next? I'm going to show you my finishes. So in my last video, I showed... Did I have Winter Wind finish? I think I was really close to a finish on Winter Wind. And so over the last two weeks, I finished it. And I went ahead and I fully finished it. I found this frame at Hobby Lobby. Um, it was in their, um, you know, in the middle. So they have all the um, decor in the middle that's like home, home decor. So there's a lot of pictures and frames. And so this had something in it and I, it was a, an Easter saying I think 
And so I brought it home and I painted it red and um, I had to put on, so I had to put on a coat of white to cover the, um, the writing on it and then I painted it red and then it's got like three coats of red on it and then I went through and I distressed it with the wax that I used for my winter ABCs. Then I just did uh, Priscilla's method of finishing. Um, magnets on the back. Of course, gingham. My husband goes, are you going to finish everything with gingham? Uh-huh. Yes, I am. And then I just attached it with magnets. Um, I used a uh, mat board for this one as well. Um, mat board is a little more economical for me. You can get a big, 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 big piece of mat board in the framing department at Michael's uh, for $9.99 or you can ask them in the framing shop and you can buy an even bigger piece of mat board for $15.99. So um, it definitely goes a long way whereas I feel like sticky board, I go through it really fast and it can get kind of expensive and I think this is a more economical way for me to finish my projects. Um, so I love how it finished. I put it on Instagram and I asked if I should put a bow on this and the general consensus was no to leave it. So I left it. I like it like this. After I posted a picture on Instagram, I I like it like this. It's going to stay. It's going to go in this room, which is why I wanted it to be kind of red because this is this room has a lot of earth tones in it. And I feel like if I um, finish the other seasons, they'll match really well in this because all of the uh, prairie schoolers seem to be kind of in those um, country color earth tones. So I'm really excited about its finish and uh, I'm looking forward to have it hanging up and enjoying it while snowpocalypse happens, I hope. Um, anyway, another finish. So I'm not even gonna try to pronounce this. It is called Love is in the Air. This is the, what it looks like. I will put a link on my blog if you are interested in stitching this for yourself. It is a freebie pattern stitches up really cute and quick and there's plenty of times left between now and Valentine's Day if you would like to stitch it. Um, I finished mine and is this I don't know if this is called a flat fold finish um, and my this is when my husband made the comment about the uh, gingham because I walked down I'm like look I finished this yep I'm gonna finish everything in gingham because I stink and love it um, I used all DMC. I did switch out a couple of things. This pink cloud here is uh, Classic Colorworks Rosy gl Glow. Rosy Glow, yeah. Everything else is DMC. Some of the DMC I did switch out for other colors, and I will make sure that that information is also in my blog. Um, I accidentally, so this was supposed to be the stem. And because I stitched all of this in kind of this olive green, you couldn't see the pot. So I ended up having to pull a light, light brown and um, stick it here. I think it turned out pretty good. Um, very cute. I did it on 32 count cashel linen. And then just um, this um, stand I got at Michael's in the summer. And I used a coupon, so it was like $7. <laughs> Love a good deal. Okay. And then I wanted to show you this next finish. So I finished this uh, end of November, first part of December last year. And it is Hello Winter by Plum Street Samplers. And this, it's, I was going to kind of fiddle with this again because I feel like the greenery is a little out of hand, but it's only going to stay in here until I get Hello Spring and finish it. So I stitched this on 32 count um, smoky blue and I used a combination of DMC and Gentle Art Sampler threads. I think it turned out really cute. Um, the only thing I took off was the 
um, Hello Winter part because it wasn't gonna fit on the box. I did do it on um, Hello Fall, but or no, Hello Summer, but I left it off of Hello Fall and Hello Winter. Um, and then this box, I found this box up in the attic. It was, I don't know what it was used for, um, but I painted it gray and I did, you know, Priscilla's uh, finishing method where you mount, so you put some magnets, washers on the back, and it just fits right there. It's going to be wonky now, but I love it. It was a lot of fun. See, it's going to be wonky now. A lot of fun to stitch up. I have Hello Spring coming uh, from 123 Stitch. And I also uh, picked up the linen for that as well. And I think it's kind of a gray linen, like a light, light gray linen. So, um, and that's gonna be in my future plans because I always start decorating for spring, the first part of March. I don't wait for the solstice. I just go ahead and break out the Easter and the spring. And um, that is what I have out in March in April and then in May I bring out the um, summer and 4th of July and I have that out until August and then I switch everything to harvest and then Halloween so anyway um, I have hello spring coming that is the end of the hello series for me um, they are a lot of fun to stitch up um, so I'm excited to conclude that series I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, it's gonna nag at me. Anyway, let's talk about some progress. So, after I finished Love is in the Air, I started on my Glitter House number three for Glitter Village. I have the barest, barest of starts. Um, just that top border, and I started on the fence last night. I only had about an hour hour and a half stitching last night because uh, I ended up helping both my kiddos with their homework and then um, I was trying to gather up things for this video so hopefully it would be kind of fun to stitch on this while it's snowing just because it is a snow winter theme so we'll see um, and then I also worked on my Hade simply meant to be had a couple of people comment that they've finished this or it's in their stash. Um, I love it. I just love it so much. So here he is. I got more of Ghost Rider. That's what I'm calling him, Ghost Rider. Um, I got his jaw kind of outlined. There's crazy, crazy confetti in here. Um, I think going forward, my plans with this is to touch it once a week and just assign it a day and stitch it once a week. The reason why is because I meant to stitch on this in January and I didn't. I didn't even touch it in January. And so after I finished, maybe after I finished Love is in the Air, I gave the, I stitched on this over an evening. Um, but I really feel like it might be better for me if I just assign it a day and then stitch on it. And I mean, it's still going to be slow progress. It's still going to take me forever. Um, but I am, when I was working on it at the time, I'm like, man, I don't see anything happening here. I mean, I'm going to show this in my next video and it's not going to look like I did anything. And then I had it laying down and I walked out of the room and then walked back in and I could totally see his jaw. So... Um, it's fun. I'm doing this on 18 count, two over two with DMC. So let's see, quilts. So in my last video, I showed um, two of my holiday, or my winter quilts that I have. Um, and I was in this video, I was going to show you my absolute favorite quilt that I have, and it's kind of it's out in the living room. And uh, when I tried to go out there and film it, it was just too dark. You couldn't see it. It's, it's very overcast here, very gloomy. And so uh, hopefully in my next video, it'll be a little bit brighter out there and I can take you out there and show you what my favorite quilt of all time is. 
don't worry, the other quilts know that it is my favorite. So hopefully next, next video I can show you that. So instead I went and I pulled a couple of my Valentine uh, minis and then one other mini quilt that I have finished. This one was a kit that I picked up from my favorite quilt shop, Sweet Treasures. Um, it was a quilt the year before last. Um, I don't remember what the fabric line was that this came out of, but these were just charm squares. It went really fast. I worked on this over an afternoon and then I quilted it myself on my sewing machine and it hangs on the outside of the bathroom door. And then I think the same year I made that one, I also made this little um, candle mat. Super cute. I think I made one of these and sold it in my Etsy shop as well. And then I had to make myself one. Um, and if I remember right, it was a freebie. And if I can think, if I can remember what it was, I will link that in my blog as well because I'm pretty positive this was a freebie. And my next one, this was a Scrappy Churn Dash block. I believe it was also a freebie. And I remember last year, I think it was either last year or it was the year before, we got a, I finished it and we got a, like a light dusting of snow. And I remember taking this outside and getting a picture of it. And it looked really cool in the snow. Very, very fun. Just little, I um, quilted it myself on my sewing machine. And I had, um, I picked up, when I went to Sweet Treasures, in fact, I think it was the same, I think it was the same time I got this one. When we checked out, I think I got a free charm pack and that's what I stitched this one out of. So this goes out in the living room um, on the coffee table and it's really cute. I like it. It's one of my favorites. Now let's see plans. My plans for the next couple of weeks are to work on finishing litter house number three and then I think I'm going to jump on spring ABCs and luckily in my stash I found a piece of 32 count vintage country mocha. So I think I'm going to stitch it on that. And then I'm also, like I said earlier, um, Hello Spring is supposed to come from 123 Stitch. And so I will work on that as well. And then I picked up the fabric for Snow Queen. No, not Snow Queen, sorry. Queen of Freedom, Queen of Freedom, sorry. Um, and I meant to pull that in here and I completely forgot. See, I knew there was something I was forgetting. Um, Queen of Freedom picked up the fabric so it's coming from 123 Stitch. I also got the beads for her and the DMC that I didn't have. And so I'm gonna start working on her too. I'm very, very excited. She's been calling to me. Um, the thing that was holding me back was I just wasn't sure what um, linen I wanted to do it on because she's going to go in this room and she's gonna go on that wall right there when she's finished. So I had to pick something that I knew was gonna look good in this room because she's gonna go in a gold frame. Um, so hopefully, hopefully it'll all work out because I'm super excited about, about getting her. And so in my next video, basically when, she, when the fabric gets here, I think I'm gonna start her. And I don't care what else is going on. I think whatever it is I'm stitching on is just gonna get put down and I'm just gonna have to get my hands into stitching her because she's so beautiful and she has just been calling to me once she's finished though, I'm going to do Forest Goddess, then I'm gonna do the Halloween Fairy, and then I am going to work, and while I'm working on those two, I'm gonna start kitting up Snow Queen because she is not cheap to kit up. So, slowly but surely. Well, let me think here, I think that's it. Giveaway time. Mm -hmm. So, the last giveaway, I gave a project bag. Congratulations to Tina Brown. She was my winner. Um, so, last summer, last spring, I had a really fun time stitching up 
Welcome Home by Country Cottage Needleworks. Um, I think that's also what I was going to do. I was going to go pull that. Next video, promise. But I stitched on this, had a great time, did all DMC threads. So my giveaway is I want to give one of you this chart, but that's not all. I also want to give you a grime guard to go with it. I always get so many compliments on my gingham grime guards when I show a picture of it. So I want one of you to win this. Welcome home and uh, grime guard to go with it. So this will fit an eight by eight grime guard. So if you are interested in winning this set, this is what I want you to do. I want to know what your hobbies are. You can say cross stitch and then list all of your other hobbies. My hobbies are, I enjoy cross stitch. I am also a long arm quilter, so I enjoy long arm quilting. I enjoy quilting. Um, I also do enjoy canning. Um, I do the hot water bath method. Um, I am going to start dabbling in gardening. I want to, I want my beds, because my beds look really sad, um, and right now they look even sadder, um, but I want my beds in the summer to be an explosion of beautiful color. So I, that's going to be one of my new hobbies is gardening. Um, I also enjoy reading. So, um, oh, and hand embroidery. So I want to know what your hobbies are. Um, so comment in the description below. Make sure that you are a subscriber. Uh, like the video. Uh, make sure, let's see, 18 years or older or have parents permission to give me your address and do not say giveaway in the comments. And I think that that's about it. Wow. 42 minutes. Nope, a little bit more than 42 minutes. So, if you've made it this far, thank you so much. Thank you to everyone who participated in my giveaway in my last video. I really appreciate it. And I know that I'm behind in answering your uh, comments and I will uh, get that fixed over the weekend because I do enjoy reading and commenting on your comments. Thank you so much for subscribing. I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed we get snow apocalypse. so fingers crossed. Uh, if we do, you'll see it on Instagram, so make sure you're following me there, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. And, oh, sounds like somebody's in trouble. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a whole bunch of something going on. Um, anyway, so I apologize if I forgot anything, but I will make sure to talk about it next week, or in two weeks. So I'll be back in two weeks, and if I forget anything, I'll chat about it then. In the meantime, have a great happy Valentine's Day. Um, and if you are, um, you know, still experiencing cold weather, stay warm. I know some people on Instagram this morning were talking about it snowing and so they're stitching today. So fun, fun, fun. Anyway, that wraps it up for me. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful two weeks. Happy stitching, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>